Hello all, welcome back to Refactoring Python Code. In the last video, we talked about and wrapped up the section on simply looking at functions and methods and variables to see what we can do in terms of refactoring. Now we're going to move into what happens if you're dealing with object-oriented programming and how we can refactor classes and objects in OOP. In this section, we have four videos for you to illustrate what you can do when it comes to refactoring classes and objects. Number one, we're going to talk about different situations to assess the correct classes for fields and methods. So where do fields and methods belong in the class? We then talk about moving functions around different classes to group functionality. In the third video, we're going to talk about refactoring delegate classes to remove double dependencies. And in the last video, we're going to remove middleman classes to reduce needless complexity. So let's first start by creating a foundation so that you can recognize the opportunities for refactoring when you're dealing with code that's involving object-oriented programming. So let's see how we can assess the correct class for fields and methods. So in this video, we're going to take a look at four situations. Situation 1, identical fields or methods in subclasses. Situation 2, only a few subclasses are using particular fields or methods. Number 3, extracting subclasses and superclasses. Number 4, using the form template method. Let's dive into code and take a look. We have here a new file within the accompanying code files of this course so this is refactor oop.py in the situation one we have identical fields or methods and subclasses so if we look at the classes across customer lead and opportunity we can see that each class has the same function get company website extension because they each have a company website and each of them tries to get the company website extension so that we can see, for example, if this is a .com or .io or .ai. So now this is obviously not ideal, right? Because you're repeating the same code every class. And at the same time, if, for example, this has a bug and it doesn't correctly retrieve the top level domain of the website, then we need to change it three times to fix the bug. So that's situation number one. Situation number two is when if only a few or not all of your subclasses are using particular fields or methods. So here we have a parent class or superclass company, which contains the website, the size, the industry, any account executive in-house that we assigned to this company, and all of this company's employees CRM. So we have two subclasses of company, small medium business and enterprise. And because small medium businesses work differently to from enterprises, we can see that, for example, account executives here is used in the enterprise subclass, but is not used in the small medium business class. Conversely, employees is used in the small medium business class and not the enterprise class. So that's the second situation where we have parent class, but not all of the parent classes fields are actually used by its subclasses. And that means that actually some of the fields should be put back into the subclasses so that we actually group the general fields in the superclass and the specific fields in the subclasses. So situation three is when we can extract subclasses and superclasses. If we go back to customer lead opportunity, we know that we have defined this function get company website three times. One of the ways we solve this is to extract a superclass that deals with the website and the website extension. One of the good candidates of this superclass is to wrap them in company. So we put this get company website extension function in the class company. And then we subclass or mix in the company class into customer lead 
an opportunity as well. The last thing is form template method. It's a fancy name, but all you need to know is if you're doing similar calculations with just a minor adjustment, you might want to consolidate the calculation and allow the adjustment to be fed in as the parameter from the subclasses. So here we have small medium business and its get pricing is about 80% cheaper on both the base rate and the tax rate, whereas an enterprise company pays the full price and pays the full tax to the government. But you can notice that most of this code is the same. So here base price plus units, base price times units, and then tax rate is calculated the same. The only difference is there is a 0.8 multiplier on get pricing. So one of the ideas of form template method is to extract this get pricing into the superclass company and company then says get discounts where get discount would be implemented individually by small bit medium business and enterprise itself. And then obviously the small bit medium business discount will be 0.8 and the enterprise would be 1.0. So that's all there is to it. We've just learned four situations of which we can refactor and improve our code cleanliness in OOP. Situation one is identical fields or methods in subclasses. Situation two is only a few subclasses are using particular fields or methods. Situation three, extracting subclasses and superclasses to reduce redundancies. And situation four, the form template method to extract common algorithms.